This is Jared from Commit to Quality, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down assertions in Cypress. So before we start, I just want to go over what we plan on doing. So we're going to go to the Commit to Quality test automation website, and we're going to start asserting things against this page. But before we get into this, I want to go through the documentation that Cypress has. Cypress has a really great in-depth information about assertions. So I'll put a link to this in the description. So immediately it states here that Cypress bundles the popular Chai assertion library, as well as helpful extensions for Synon and jQuery, bringing you dozens of powerful assertions for free. They also go above and beyond here, kind of show you a bunch of different things you can do with Chai. So you've got some chainers for doing not. It gives you examples of using should and expect. It's because it ex it's extending the Chai library, you can use things like expect or should. So you can pick and choose how you want your assertions to look depending on the way you want your tests to be read. Also has some information about jQuery as well. So you've got like should have attribute and you can pick attributes they have. A bunch of different others. I like it even breaks down that if you don't find an assertion you want, you can even add your own. And they do a lot of linking out to the kind of Chai documentation. So once again, I'll put stuff like this. In, I'll put this link in the description where you can kind of go over things. You can see the different ways you can assert against objects in Chai. One thing I do really like about Cypress and even new tools like Playwright is these kind of web first assertions. So if you're asserting against a locator, the neat thing is it won't just fail immediately. It'll keep retrying until it either fails after reaching its timeout or until the assertion matches what we expected it to, which is really cool. It just means that your kind of web UI test become that little bit less flaky. So like I said, I'll put a link to this in the description, but it's really useful to go over, but we're going to be breaking down a lot of this today anyway. That's enough talking. Let's get into the code. So we'd already go into commit quality, which uh, a link to this website will be in the description. What I want to say is let's create a constant called rows. And we'll say side.get and let's just go back to the web page to have a look at what we want to actually grab from this. The first assertion I want to do is a very basic one where we're going to grab all the rows from here. So there's 10 rows and assert that there are 10 rows. So I can say product list table and then we can go T body TR, which if we do our side.get, it'll return each individual one, which would have a count of 10. Let's say a class name product list table, T body, and then TR. Great. So we've got our rows. Now then let's perform our assertion. So assert there are 10 rows. So what we can do is we can say rows dot its length. And we'll say should equal and then we want to say 10. So I kind of prefer using this kind of should way. But once again, you can look into using expect when anything else. And we will use expect a little bit further on just to show you us using that. But now then, what we should see is this is our first assertion created. And if we uh, open up Cypress, so say npx Cypress open, we'll load up the test and we should see it's working as expected. So I'll say end to end test, electron. Let's go into example. And here we go. You've got visited the page. We've got 10 of the rows, which is highlighted here, 10 matched elements. We've then said with it, its length, say 10 matched elements and asserted 10 to equal 10. Once again, we can change this to be 11 just so we can see the error message that I output. So it's retrying, it's waiting up to the timeout. Of course, it's found 11, it's found 10, but we expect 11. And you can see here timed out after retrying after four seconds, expected 10 to equal 11, gives you the line of code that's failing as well. So you can see everything that Cypress has built with these assertions has made it as easy as possible for us to scope where the issue is. Okay, so that's one of the more basic examples, but let's jump back into the code. Let's change this back to 10 so it passes. But now let's start doing some chai jQuery. For this example, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll grab the text of this filter button and make sure that 
it actually does state filter. Okay, not the greatest decision, but it's a good one of showing how you can use jQuery to get like the text attribute out of this. So let's first of all get this by its data test ID. And we'll say, let's put it into a into a constant. So we'll say filter button equals side dot get attribute needs to be inside square brackets and we'll say data test id equals filter button and then what we'll say is filter button dot should and now what i can do is say have text and you can already see in here as well is we have a have length and everything so we could even use that up here instead of saying its length we could say have length but let's say have text to stick to this and then after it so you can see here you've got should which is the chainer and then the type of what you want so if we hover over this you can see you've got the chainer which is like the should have text and then you pass through what the value should be so in this case we're going to say have text and it was filter so let's hit save on that let's go back to uh, Cypress test and you can see it's passed here so it's looked for this filter you can see it's highlighted here as well which is great and expected this to have the text of filter which it did okay so what I want to show you next on this is how we can quickly change this to negate this so instead of saying have text we can make this fail by saying not dot have text and if we save this now and we go back to our cypress test runner what you'll see here is it's waiting that four seconds again which is the default timeout and we're expecting the button not to have the text of filter but of course in this example it does have the text so that one would fail but that's a quick way of showing you how you can say you don't want text or specific attributes or whatever it is as part of the locator that you're looking at now another neat thing that cypress do as well is they allow you the ability to chain your assertions so what we can do let's stick to this one and we'll say chain in assertions let's stick to the filter button and we'll say filter button and tell what, we'll just take this. We'll say should have text of filter, which we know passes if we actually get rid of the not. So we'll say should have text of filter, and we want it to have. Uh, what should we? Let's let's go for a class because we talked about grab other things. We could say have class, and I believe when I set this up, it has a class of filter button. There we are, a filter button. So we can say have class comma filter button hit save and what we should see now is the two assertions being performed on this filter button but instead of having to say filter button should have text and then copy in a line of code of filter button should have class or filter button we can do it all in one nice readable line of code here so let's just double check that's worked and you can see assertion to have the text so that's the first one, which is on its own. That's the one that's chained. And then immediately after it, you can see another assert was performed. So it's treating it as like a second one where it's also making sure that it has the class. Now, of course, what happens if we make this fail? If I say not have text and go back, what you can see here is it was waiting it was waiting of course it does have the class of filter button so this is going to fail and you can see here that it's passed on the first one but when it comes to chaining on the second and it's fallen over so even here when you're chaining things cypress is making it really easy you can see you've got should have text but it's not pointing out this issue it's pointing out the and to not have the class of filter button and it's even messed up here so it's just made it really simple and easy for anyone to kind of debug these issues so like i originally said these are just kind of quick examples and you can start playing around with things to see how can i test different attributes how can i test text boxes have a placeholder before we kind of close off this video i also want to go over the should callback function so let's just go to the cypress documentation for a moment let's scroll down to the should callback and once again says pure which is exactly what i was going to say is if your built-in assertions are not enough you can start to write your own assertion function and pass it as a callback to the should command cypress then will cover all the kind of automatic retryability the callback function until it passes or until the command times out see how we can kind of work with this then in my rows here 
we want to pick the first row or maybe the second or whatever and we want to make sure that the text inside the row matches 11 product to 15 and the date we've stopped to 2021 how can we do that well we can use the should callback so let's go into example and let's just put a comment of should callback example and here we can see side.get and tell you what we're actually going to want to take this one the the rows could have just taken the constant but i've taken that instead now and what we can say is should and we want to return parameter of rows here let's create our callback and inside here now rows should be the length of 10 so we should have all 10 rows but what if then i only want to check the data for the first row that appears what we can do is we can say let's use expect because we haven't used that yet and i said it would we'll say expect rows zero which is the first index and we'll say dot two dot have text and in here is where we'd say like 11 product and whatever the date and stuff was or whatever the price was so let's just save this i'm expecting this to fail at the moment because we have more text than this but the assertion is valid and what i'm going to do i'm going to actually grab the value from uh, the failed assertion uh, i need to also fix this first so we don't fail before we get to this point so what you can see here is automatically retrying the assertion once again told us failed after four seconds and it's expected the text of 11 product but like i said it's going to be a bit more because we're saying 11 product to price 15 2021 of course there's no space in because instead of digging into things even more we've just said literally grab the whole text of the row so i could actually copy this and paste it in here and this assertion will pass as expected so what we've done now is a bit of data table testing really where we've digged into the rows and we're going into each individual row to make sure it has the text of whatever we expected and there we are that's passed and once again you can do this for whatever you want so we can change this we could, or we could copy and paste it basically totally up to you how you want to do it we could say expect rows one which would be the second and that should be 10 we might have different product information but we'll check it looks like it's going to fail uh, but here we are first one passed it's highlighted the second one when it's timed out expecting this information instead so if i was just to copy this into this value now what we've done is we've created our own kind of assertions going through the data table saying expecting these values to match the rows for that date table perfect all working as expected and that's kind of all i wanted to show with this today it's kind of breaking down assertions of what you can do like i said the documentation is really well put together so definitely have a read through this if there's anything that doesn't make sense or if you think i haven't showed anything that you'd like to know please drop a comment down below a like and subscribe really helps me out as well and thank you for watching